Tonight on Let It Rip, as you've heard, we are getting reports that Israel has launched an attack on Iran in the last hour and a half. This all stems from an Israeli attack on the Iranian consulate in Syria on April 1st. As we wait for further confirmation, we took on this conflict on Let It Rip. We wrapped up recording the show just moments before these reports surfaced. Two sides divided overseas and here at home. Joining us now to take on this very important topic, Arab American news publisher Osama Sablani and former Republican State Representative Rocky Roszkowski, Fox 2 anchor and attorney Charlie Langton with us as always. And so here we are on another tense night uh, in this world that it seems almost the norm now to have another night of tension where we wonder tomorrow what the headlines will read. Rocky, when we wake up tomorrow morning, what likely could be the headline about Benjamin Netanyahu uh, coming back and striking against Iran? Is that something that's a possibility you think he's going to do? Well, it's, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. One of the things is that I've learned about the Israelis is they, they are not like the Obama administration. If you remember during the Syrian conflict where Obama kept drawing a red line in the sand and every time it would be passed, crossed, he'd draw a new red line. The Israelis believe in deterrence and in the absence of deterrence in the Middle East, they will bring deterrence. Is that the right thing to do right now Absolutely for the world? it is, absolutely. Any military person, especially those that have been to war, know that war is abhorrent and, and no one ever wants a war. But the only way you stop a war is peace through strength. And you have to have deterrence. You have to let your enemies and those that oppose you know that if they attack you, you will attack but isn't that in force. But isn't that precisely what Iran was doing when they were responding with these drones and missiles? Was an attack on the Syrian consulate in which two Iranian generals were killed? I mean, and isn't, isn't, that that exactly, isn't that exactly what Israel did by protecting themselves because that general and out of that consulate were weapons that were moving to Hezbollah and they were partly involved in the Hamas raid on October 7th into Israel? So this was a response and basically letting the world know that do not attack Israel. Do not attack someone unless you want to be attacked. Osama Sablani, doesn't Israel have a right to defend itself? Yeah. Every country has a right to defend itself when it is invaded by enemies. Iran is not an exception. Israel is not an exception. What happened is the Israelis started this not only a few days ago. They have been bombing Iranian targets inside Syria and violating the international law of Syrians and Iranians at the same time. Israel is not innocent. Israel has committed crimes and, and they violated international law several times before then. Now, Iran is not going to stand there and take it. I can tell you right now that, is a, that Iran is a formidable state. They have the means to respond. The reason they did not respond before because it wasn't the right time and it wasn't the right frame that they wanted to respond through. But the Israelis, especially Netanyahu, have gone too far bombing and killing Iranians. And they said, this is it. Now, <laughs> now they responded I, to his attack in Syria. But isn't yeah, the, and they are saying, I, I and they are saying, and they are saying, and they're saying that if you strike again, this time we're not going to wait 12 days. It's going to be a few minutes before we strike back. Is there a relationship between Iran and uh, Hamas. That's the issue, I think. And Hezbollah. And, and the Hezbollah. Houthis. And, and, and everybody, sure. and every so, other proxy so organization. Well, so but, but Osama, so the reason that's important. But, but, but wait, wait. But the if they have a relationship with because Hamas, if they, have a relationship they are not in a Hamas. war. But I understand, not in a war but with by Israel. proxy, isn't there, isn't there funding? Isn't so, there? So, America, so America, is it okay to, to target America and kill American uh, people in, in the Middle East and troops because America supports Israel? And give them money and weapons and bombs. Wait a minute. Hold on one second. I ran if you, if you're gonna, I ran if you are going, I ran if you are going to apply the rules I ran against Iran because they do support Hamas, then the same rules should be applied to the Americans that support Israel. I mean, if isn't this, but Rocky, they isn't are. this a paradox then? Because he's saying the same thing you're saying about the other place. He's talking yeah, but, about Iran but, but again, having a right to defend we're, we're itself. We're playing Look, a game here. They can't see. They can't see the They can't just see it. We're playing a game of what came first, the chicken or the egg. Let's be honest. If is if Israel was armed to the hilt and their enemies were not, would there be peace? Most likely, yes, there would be. 
Israel's not looking to gain anyone's territory beyond the territory. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Don't say that because you lose the credibility. No, that's absolutely. If Israel had enough arms, there would not be a war in Gaza. There would not be a war. But if there was. Why won't they stop? Where? How far do they go? There's got to be some. You have to eliminate. Hold on one second. You have to eliminate. Benjamin Netanyahu showed us a map of a state that is there. Rocky, finish your thought. To answer your question, Charlie, they believe in deterrence. If you hit them, they'll hit back harder. And that's exactly the right way to do it. That's the exactly the way you want to create for future peace. And if one Hamas soldier is still alive, then that's one too many. And that's exactly what Israel do you is think, targeted. Do you think it's reasonable to think that somehow Israel is going to defeat Hamas completely? Absolutely. You think Absolutely. That's is it happening? It is. Are they making it? Is. Are they it's making set, progress towards that? It they is are set. negotiating with Hamas. <laughs> they, they have no other way to stop this other and than Hamas, negotiating with Hamas. Because they are sitting right hostages. now, as because we speak, they are recognizing the fact that they cannot stop this war and go anywhere without talking to Hamas. Because I am not hostages. defending Hamas. I'm saying to you that Hamas is not someone that you can go and kill. Well, it's an way. idea. It's a resistance that's going to continue but if they as have, long as the occupation. It's a minority. It's a minority. Have, come on. It's a minority. Minority. It's a minority. It's a minority. The majority of the people in Palestine, in the no, Palestinian area, the majority area, of the Palestinian are under of, occupation. majority of yeah, people in Iran Hamas, want peace. What's the right way to stop Hamas? There's got Creating to be a solution that is acceptable Wait a minute. to the Palestinians. No, a two-state solution that Israel has come on. You, you cannot Hamas keep has six been, million Palestinians Hamas, under occupation. Hamas has been it. put can't in charge it. of the Gaza Strip. They've been given money. They've been given food. They've been given every opportunity. Rocky, come on, Hold man. on one second. They've been come given on, every they have opportunity. Been under Hold for on one second. They have been that given every speak, opportunity man. to build the Gaza Strip up. All right. Did what you, have they done? They've taken all. Absolutely. They've taken all those money and built Rocky. And bought One missiles. moment, though, because we know for a fact that before yeah. October 7th, Israel was making sure that the medicine and the food and the water, how much could get through, how much couldn't. The airspace is controlled by Israel. Yeah, but they've they've had water. Lives. They've had before but, October 7th. But they didn't always no, have before, everything they needed. Hold right? on one they didn't second. Always have the That's not the case. That's not the case. Not the case. Before October 7th, they were getting a ton of food. Oh, they were yeah. getting water. Enough. But Thank you. the question is. Thank you, because the, the, uh, the is, defense minister, the the defense minister is, said they are a human animal. Why are the Palestinians. Why, are, how they look why at is Hamas more interested in building tunnels and buying weapons than they are buying food and medical aid for their people? No, I want you to be able to respond. That question. Answer, I'm going to answer, answer the question. The question is, people cannot take it anymore under occupation. 75 years is too much. You didn't answer the question. Six million Palestinians are living under occupation. They cannot drink, they cannot eat, they cannot live, they cannot sleep without the orders and the control of the Israelis. So let's talk and about that solutions. That, that territory since 2005 has been under the control of Hamas. No, Hamas has no, received no, a it's full not lot true. of money. It's it's and all they was, did was, it was under siege by the Israelis. But it's amazing but Rocky, that, Rocky, Rocky, isn't it true that, that that area is not lacking is missiles. Rocky, so, isn't it true? On, isn't it true? And isn't it a fact that both sides recognize that it's not just controlled by Hamas? We know for a fact that the Israeli are in charge of a lot of, of that when it Everything. comes to airspace, when it comes to what can come in and out. We know that. So it's not true to say it's only Hamas controlled. No, right? it, when you look at what happened after 2005, Israel gave Hamas total control back. Yeah. They stepped out. And if you're they saying, if you're saying hold on one they second, if you're they saying they controlled they everything, they gave everything. everything. If, they step out. If, if you're saying that it's amazing how Israel can control something, but yet they didn't know about every single tunnel that was built there and every single missile that was brought in and the attack on Wait, October 7th. Can I ask the, uh, so I thought that they were the Charlie, king of the Charlie, go They are, yeah. well, they are not. The they are not. I have news for you. They are not. They are not. The Israelis are going to lose, gentlemen. and they're going to lose this time. One second, because gentlemen. Charlie, 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 go ahead. Osama, do the Palestinians, uh, they're not on the same terms as Hamas. Why can't the Palestinians get rid of Hamas as well? Absolutely. They because Hamas is part of the Palestinian struggle. Before Hamas, it was the PLO. But isn't that a problem Let me tell you. Before Hamas, there was the PLO, and we called the PLO a terrorist organization. So when the PLO signed an, a, an agreement with Israel, the PLO was treated like garbage. And therefore, Hamas came in. Now we want to get rid of Hamas. Somebody else is going to come more radical. It's amazing. More, more it's Charlie, amazing more Charlie. that this is all controlled And they're going to fight Tehran, back Charlie, because Iran. people this are not going to still live under occupation. It's normal. Osama, this is, this Osama is by Rocky, Tehran. Charlie, yeah. this past Saturday, when all of this broke, of, of course, about the drone attacks in Israel, uh, there were people saying, I'm really concerned about World War III. I'm concerned that yeah. if yeah. Israel responds, 
in my look they've said Iranian forces have said that even a small fraction of an invasion into Iran is going to cause massive and harsh consequences that drags the US into this that drags our allies into it and it drags our enemies into this how worried are you about our world in the next week two weeks I'm after not. Passover I'm not why one of the best things that Israel could do would be their war cabinet to take out the nuclear capabilities, nuclear offensive weapons of Iran. I would be, I would sleep much safer at night. I, but uh, I, 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 I don't think that they're going to be able to do that without the help of the United States. You see, Israel, if did not, if the United States did not help them on Saturday, and Britain, and France, and Jordan, and Saudi Arabia, and everybody around, they would have been hit it's by amazing. 300 Osama drones. Jordan, Lani, Saudi Arabia. 300 drones. These are, these are regimes. I they are traitors. Osama, I want to thank you for joining us. Rocky, as well. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Charlie and I are on the other side of the thank break. You. Twelve jurors seated in former President Trump's <laughs> money trial. Now they just need alternates. But with this high-profile case and this divisive defendant, many say it's impossible for Trump to get a fair trial. That debate when we come back. Back now, let her rip debating whether former President Trump can get a fair trial in his hush money case. I'm joined now by Sheila Cockrell with Citizen Detroit, a Democrat and former conservative talk show host Jim Johnson. Good to see both of you. Charlie Langton, of course, on for the ride as well. Okay, and so, and then there were 12. 12 jurors have been seated in this hush money trial. This is the only time in the history of our country where a president, a former president, has been charged in a criminal case. Jim Johnson, not a proud moment for America, huh? Certainly not for the legal system in America, uh, and I can I can kind of sum this up. We can go through all four of them, but let's start with the one in Manhattan that's going on right now. I think all people need to know about the case in Manhattan is two years ago, Dra uh, uh, Bragg and the uh, his uh, uh, prosecution team brought in the number three guy in Biden's DOJ to run the prosecution against Donald Trump. If you want to move into Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade in Georgia, both of them, several meetings at the White House and the DOJ coordinating their case. And the same, obviously, with uh, Durham in the other two federal cases. Is this just a witch hunt, Sheila? Is this nothing but a witch hunt that we're looking at here? No. I mean, I think, first of all, the comment that Jim just made about the guy coming from Washington. It should be known that that gentleman started off in the with uh, Alvin Bragg, yeah. Yeah. went to Washington, and has come back to work in the office he used to work in before. I personally think this set of conversations around Trump particularly need to be, stay rooted in facts. Democracy is what's fundamentally at stake here, and if we keep having a process that has, has people telling each other half-truths in order to prove a point as opposed to dealing with the facts. Don Donald Trump will get a fair trial. There are m normal average Americans who are not tied up in the various uh, groups or, or you know, groups that are, have, have, have agendas, political agendas, do believe fundamentally in our system. That's what makes it work. And those people, those 12 people and the alternates are going to set aside their personal perspectives and deal with the facts and they will convict or acquit Donald Trump based on the facts. But when you look at some of the jurors who were dismissed, I think it was juror number 430, and they basically came out and said, look, they looked at her old Facebook page from 2020, and it, they said that he's, uh, he's immoral, he's not a good Christian, he's a bad guy, all of those things that were said. That's what was found. But how many people four years ago right. were in coffee circles and dinner parties talking about how much they dislike this guy? What if many of those jurors are seated right now saying they are going to be objective? You trust but you them? Can, but you can be objective. You can have all the all of us have opinions and points of view. The point of our legal system is that you have all that, you know what your what your beliefs are, what your uh, experience has been, what you've said. But and when you go into a courtroom, when you take that oath, a solemn oath, you are saying no matter what I think about you know, this person or this situation, I am only going to listen to the facts as they are presented, and I'm going to make my decision based on the facts as they're presented. Charlie, you and I have had arguments about this, uh, back and forth healthy arguments about the jury system and how well it works and whether or not we should have faith. You have faith in these 12 jurors that they can get the job done? Yes, I've picked juries. I like juries. I want, as a lawyer, I absolutely love the system. As I understand, these lawyers had unlimited challenges for cause in this in this preemptory challenges they could have picked anyone they wanted they got a jury in three days that's it very short period of time meaning that they're fair think about this though you talk about Donald Trump can't get a fair Trump system. it's in New York and they're all Democrats it's not true but nevertheless 
The people that say, I don't like Donald Trump, they're off the jury. Right away, gone. So now you're gonna get a jury of people that probably either don't care about Trump or they're neutral about Trump or maybe they like Trump. So it's not an unfair jury. But the being objective works. and fair are two different things, don't you think? Yes, they completely are. But in this case, you got, it's the art of picking a jury. I could tell you some reason I do. Well, I, well, I, I have a position. I've got a, I'm going in there with my set of facts. Is my set of facts, will they, will you understand me? Can I relate to you better? It's the art of picking a jury. It's very, very important. Okay, so let's talk about this. 34 counts of falsifying business records. We're talking about $130,000 paid to a former adult. Not disclosure a, a agreement. Star. But oh, but here's the thing. Okay, it's an NDA. But just in general, if you want to keep it in the realm of uh, a perception here, as a conservative and as someone who talked about, many people did, conservative values and character and family values, if this was a Democrat who was in the shoes of Donald Trump, Jim, and he was accused of paying off a porn star, $130,000, and having 34 counts against him, would you have the same tone as you have now? Uh, p uh, perhaps. It all depends on the circumstances. If it was the Donald J. Trump Justice Department bringing those charges, that would be a red flag for me. If it was all fair and square, I might have a different attitude. But let me let me just say this. There's only one reason for doing this trial. First of all, it never should have been brought. All four of these things are complete electioneering on the part of the Department of Justice. What they want out of this case, and they don't care, it's going to be overturned even if he is convicted. It'll be overturned. The judge is biased. His, uh, his, his, his daughter, who has worked for the Democratic Party. But it's a jury it's deciding this case, right? Uh, it is, it, but, and to Charlie's point, it's 90% or 95% Democrat in Manhattan. That's the jury pool that he's faced with. But they don't care, and they don't care if it gets overturned on appeal. He'll never see a day sure. in jail. What they want is Donald J. Trump convicted felon on the headline of every newspaper and leading every TV wow. newscast going into the November and may, election. maybe Donald Trump wants that too, because every time well, he's on trial, I, his poll numbers go up. Uh, we have questions from our audience as well. It's a new part of Let It Rip. We want you to be a part of our show. And so uh, who do we have? We have Ryan from, uh, actually, Sherry Gay Dignago. Uh, she's a regular on Let It Rip. She has a question for Jim. Sherry's coming in from Detroit. Sheila, uh, Sherry, rather, go ahead. Hey, Ruth, thanks for having me on. I'm always on and I enjoy Let It Rip, but this time I have a question for Jim Johnson. Listen, you know, lots of conservative Republicans have really kind of thrown in the towel for Trump. We know this is about hush money. You know, we have a judicial system in place for a reason. If he's done nothing wrong, why not have his day in court and address this uh, to prove whether he's innocent or guilty? Why not, Jim? Why not, Jim? He is having his day in court. As a matter of fact, he's had a whole week of days in court this week and many others before it, and he will continue to. Uh, he may uh, be convicted uh, in what I call a uh, probably compromised jury, in my view, uh, but it'll be overturned on appeal. There's no question. All they want is the headline that he's a felon. That's the only reason they're doing that. Sheila? Well, I just, I mean, again, I, I really think the reason, the way our country operates as a democracy is having confidence in the systems, and in, in particularly the judicial system. To throw around this, well, I know every, you don't, no one knows who's on this jury. How can you say that you know that 95% of the folks who are part of this process are, are Democrats? You can't say that. I don't know. A lot of people I know in Manhattan are stone, wealthy Republicans, so, I mean, they could be as much on this well, jury as anybody else. D Donald Trump lived in New York Correct. for a long time and has buildings there and was a part of the, uh, the force. Which they want to take away from him. Okay, Let we have like, Nobody ahead, wants their day in court, by the way. Nobody wants their <laughs> day in court. Uh, not this guy. <laughs> okay, so no we, way. we have another uh, Charlie Olisic's Let It Rip on the Road, but we're going to be uh, taking it on the road right now with, sure. uh, we understand it's Ryan from Troy. Uh, Ryan, you have a question. Hey, Ruth, thanks for having me. I just wanted to ask Sheila a question. Sheila, what makes you think President Trump will have an unbiased jury in a fair trial? And 
Well, he goes on to say okay. uh, he was cut off. I think he's. Yeah, he, we had talked earlier. He says, and and what what makes you think that these charges are actually cogent, good charges, or what makes you think it's not a witch hunt? Well, we uh, at, at the practical level, we need to hear the evidence. We need to hear what the facts are that are brought in. Why do I think he can get a fair trial? Because if we're at the point in this country where we do not believe that our judicial system is it can be fair, we literally have undercut the basic premise of democracy. This is this is the prop for me. The problem with Donald Trump is bigger than even this legal stuff. He is someone who is undercutting the fundamental beliefs in American democracy, and to undercut the judicial system is is to do that. I think, that he can, I think he can Sheila. get. I think he can get a fair trial because I believe that there are 12 people and six alternates who are going to set aside whatever their personal beliefs are, listen to the facts, and vote their conscience. We, I just wanted to ask you this, Jim. Uh, it, it, he violated a gag order apparently seven, seven times, times, right? Um, if that was anybody else, right. that would not be acceptable, right? Is this, does, no, but no, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you, think that, do you think that he believes that he's above the law? No, I don't believe he thinks Why would you violate a gag order seven times, though? Uh, well, okay, there's, because why? He's singled out. It's a one-way street. Why isn't there a gag order on everybody else in the trial? We're hearing from Michael Cohen. We're hearing from Stormy Daniels. The judge has not been silenced. Why is it just Donald Trump? Charlie, is there a reason the defendant is singled out? right taken away from him. But you know what? Listen, this is not just any defendant. The Donald Trump is different. The bottom line is he is different, and he does have uh, some certain leeway about about the. He's running for president, and he's going to be the nominee. Yeah, none of us at this table have ever been the presidential nominee, right. so he is a different defendant. And the rules are a little different, procedurally, a little different. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you can't just uh, hold him to every single thing. Well, but the well, but but the rules of evidence are the same, the facts are the same, and he will get a fair trial. And the rules of law are in place, and Same. they're happening right now uh, down the road in New York. We're going to be back in a moment with final thoughts, and Charlie is taking Let It Rip on the road. Donald Trump, can he get a fair trial? I don't know. You know what? Time and days now, I think he'll get a fair trial. No, I don't think he's going to be given a fair trial. Why not? Um, because of all the things that he did. Yeah. I think he has a pretty bad public image with everybody, so I think he's going to be a little biased. Donald Trump on trial in New York. Can he get a fair trial? Absolutely not. I hope in America he can get a free trial, he get a fair trial. Would you be a good juror on this case? I don't know. Would you be a good juror on the Donald Trump case? No. <laughs> Why not? I wouldn't take that. I feel like they're going to do something like either they're going to make it really hard for him to win or they're going to make it extremely easy, one or the other. The case with Stormy Daniels, the, yeah. the, the porn star, yeah. the hush money. I know. Are you going to be watching it? Of course I am. Oh. Of course. Of course I am. She's watching. She's probably watching this right now to hear your final thoughts, Jim. Final thought, Biden has no record to run on. He can't run on. So the only way he can beat Donald Trump is by prosecuting him or keeping him off the ballot, which all of, of the above has been in play. Trump will win in 2024 by a landslide. Sheila, final thoughts. My final thought is that for democracy to work, people have to understand that the judicial system works when you listen to the facts. What I just heard from our, our package there is that we need to do a whole lot more education around civic responsibility that people don't know and don't understand that you're not supposed to express your bias. Sheila, good to see you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Charlie, as usual, us. on the road and here doing a great job. My take is the hush money trial for Trump, nothing but politics. If you believe that's true, then do you also believe Biden appointed Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas was rightfully put through an impeachment hearing for not handling the politically charged border crisis properly? If so, you think the witch hunt only applies to your guy, but the guy who's from the other party? Well, that's legit. That's a story playing out on social media. Your feed is filled with opinions. The ones you read are the ones you agree with. Read more of it, and the social media beast feeds you more of that. But the truth doesn't just live in opinions we enjoy. They live in the inconvenient news stories that we try to ignore, whether it be about Biden or Trump. Watching and reading the news we don't like could be the writing on the wall we all need to see. That does it for this edition of Let It Rip. The Let It Rip discussion continues online. Sound off on Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, or Fox2Detroit.com.